In this video, we're going to look at scheduling problems. Uh, that's a part of the project management part of general maths. Um, and I would say it's a pretty difficult part of general maths. Um, I've got all these learning objectives here. We're going to do all of them. Um, I think with a lot of things um, in general maths, it helps to learn mostly just by through examples and things like that. So I've got some, some notes that uh, perhaps you could add to your band reference. But the main thing is just kind of following along with the examples and then um, doing lots of practice yourself to make it make sense for you. Okay, so um, yeah, let's talk about what scheduling is about. So if you've got some big project, so here I've got a picture of the Melbourne um, Metro Rail Tunnel that's um, about to be completed. Um, and yeah, that's an enormous project, right? And you've got all these different tasks that need to be completed and completed in a certain order. Um, so if you already have an activity network that um, has all of those tasks and their durations, then um, you can start doing some analysis of that, um, which is what we're looking at with scheduling. So um, there's some really important key vocab to be across before you can really do any of this stuff. Um, so when we're talking about earliest start time, what we mean is that's the earliest that, it, that, the, um, that, that particular task, so that activity, that um, edge on our activity network, um, when can it start? The earliest possible time it could start from when the project begun. So that's assuming that everything else beforehand hasn't been delayed. What's the earliest that could start? And that's meaning that all of its predecessors have finished. Um, conversely to that, we have later start time. So that is what is the latest a, a task could possibly start without introducing any delays. So um, you've got all the, the activities or the tasks or the edges before it, um, and there might be a, a for it to later than its earlier start time. Um, and this, uh, this is just telling you just how late it can start from the start of the project without introducing um, any delays in your project. Uh, then there's the float time. So you can think of that as a bit like this guy here. He's um, uh, taking a bit of a break. Um, and the float time is just this difference between the later start time and the earlier start time. So we just subtract those two things. Um, and that is, you know, what delays can we afford to have for this um, task in our, in our project? Um, and then the critical path, um, I think the easiest way to understand it is just to understand it as it's the um, longest path that um, goes from your start vertex all the way to your finish vertex. So it's the stuff that overall takes the most amount of time. Um, and it means that th those are the things that you can't allow for any delays. There's no float time there. There's no chance to take a break. You've got to have all of those um, immediately start after their predecessor has finished. Um, or otherwise you're going to introduce delays into your project, which, you know, naturally you don't want to do um, complete, you know, cost blowouts or, or whatever, or an angry um, public who want their trains to be here already. Okay, so um, here is my kind of notes on finding the critical path. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll run you through it. Um, I would suggest probably have, having something like this in your bound reference could be good, just so that, you know, if you get stuck in an exam or anything like that, um, you'll know what to do. So uh, what I do is I'm, I'm going to draw a box with two cells, so just kind of two boxes, really, um, right next to each other, um, next to each vertex, so normally just kind of just above it. Uh, and then the first thing we have to do is what's called forward scanning. Um, what that is doing is we're, we're putting in these earlier start times, these ESTs. Uh, so at the start vertex, the earliest that the start could start is at time zero, right? No time has passed. So we just put zero in the first box on the left. Uh, and then as we go through each edge, um, that's going through kind of each activity, we're just adding on the, um, the duration of that edge to the previous vertex's earliest start time. Uh, so we'll see what that looks like in just a sec. Um, now, if there are multiple paths to a vertex, the earliest start time is the largest of those possible options. So, um, yeah, if you've got, you know, two, two different paths coming together, just always use the largest one. Um, so, forward scan through the whole, put in all of the ESTs in the leftmost box. Um, and then what we have to do is, if we're going to get this critical path, we're going to have to do some backward scanning. Um, the first step in that is just put in whatever your final um, EST is for that finish vertex, just put it as the finish vertex um, later start time, the LST, then we're kind of working backwards. So as we go back across each edge, we are subtracting off the previous LST, the, the duration of that edge. Um, and now, um, again, you've, you might have these situations where you've got two different paths to a vertex. And then what we want to do is use the smallest LST. So I think this is probably where students might get confused that um, when we're forward scanning, we're picking the largest option and we're backward scanning, we're picking the smallest option. So I would definitely have a note of that in my 
bound reference to just uh, look at when I'm doing one of these problems. Uh, calculating the float time um, is pretty straightforward. You're just doing the LST for that vertex, take away the EST. Uh, now the critical path is the path that has no float time at all. So another way to think of it is really it's when the LST and the EST are equal, when they're the same, right? There's going to be no float time. Um, so yeah, uh, I've also put this kind of, this is probably what I'd have in my bound reference of just the key things to remember. I find the things that I forget is um, whether it's the largest or smallest, um, when I've got the multiple paths coming together, depending on whether I'm forward scanning or backward scanning. So I, I would keep that just as a like quick reference for myself during an exam. Um, but yeah, this is really just saying stuff from the previous page. So if you'd like to pause the video, add it to your bound reference, you're, you're welcome to. Okay, let's do one. I think this is really the, the critical way uh, to, to learn this stuff. Um, so we've got here, um, uh, the principal at a school is um, building tunnels between buildings. Um, so that if it rains, no one gets wet. Um, and uh, we can represent this uh, as an activity network. Uh, first, it's, uh, it asks us to calculate the minimum time required to complete this project. So that's gonna be the EST, the earliest start time for the finish, right? Once we're at the finish, we're done. So uh, let's just kind of work along. So at the start in this leftmost box, we just put zero. And as we go along this edge here, well, duration of two. So we're adding that onto the EST for the start. Going along this way, we're just adding on three. Now, um, if we go down the bottom here to this vertex, well, it's three plus four. I'm going to get there. So it's seven. Um, now, with here, we've got two ways to get to this vertex here. Yeah. So either we could go this way or this way. Now, going on the dummy edge, we're only adding zero. So it would be three and going along the top edge, we're adding five. So it'd, it'd go up to seven. Now we want to pick the largest one when we're forward scanning. So I'm putting seven in there. Here, we've got seven down here. We could add 12, that would make 19. Or we could add 10 here and get 17 going along the top way. So we want to keep the biggest one for our forward scanning. So we put 19. And then we've got an option, but to go along G, which has a duration of five. So we get 24. Okay, so calculate the minimum time required to complete this project. That is 24, and the weights are in months, so it's 24 months. Always good to put in a unit if you're given one. Okay, now we need to do the critical path. So um, we've already got all the ESTs. We need to do the LSTs and then see where there's no float time, so where these two boxes give the same number. So the first way to the first thing we have to do to get the LSTs is in this last box. We just put whatever is in the other box there, the EST for it. So it's 24. Then we work backwards. So if we're going back along here, we're subtracting off five from 24. That gives you 19. Now going say down here, we're subtracting off 12. That would give me what would that give me? Um, that would give me seven. And then here if we go along here, subtracting off 10, we get nine. Um, okay, now we could go along the dummy edge and we would get nine, but we could go along this bottom edge and we get three. In this case, we're doing the smallest one, right? So it is different to our forward scanning. Um, and now if we go along the top here, what are we gonna get? Uh, nine take five is four. And then here we could either get two or if we went this along the bottom way, we would get zero. And so we're picking the smallest one, we take zero. Okay, now our critical path is where our float times are zero. That is where your EST and your LST are the same. And um, there's only a few spots where it's not the same. So um, we can see really that, okay, the float time is gonna be zero from here. And then you're gonna get zero down here, 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 here. So what I would do is I'm, if I'm writing this out, I'm just going, okay, it's start. And then I'm doing A, I'm gonna go to C next, then to F, then to G. And that is my critical path. All right. Um, very good. So yeah, and there, there is uh, John Ephraim. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully that's not too bad, um, that process. Um, just a process like lots of things in networks um, definitely requires lots of practice. Um, I've got a more complicated one here that um, through, but I think what we'll do is just, um, if you'd like to give this one a go yourself, um, you could just pause the video, copy out that network for yourself and um, put in all the forward scanning and backward scanning. It's, it's a similar process to before. Um, and I've got some answers here. Um, so you can also pause the video once you're ready to see the answers. And um, hopefully you've got the same critical path and the same ESTs and LSTs.